LA Special Flight Rules Traffic, Cessna 80991 at 3,500 southbound over the top of LAX. LA Special Flight Rules. We're going to go ahead and start monitoring Catalina and get the weather. Catalina Airport, Avalon, California. Automated weather observation. Wind calm, visibility 10, sky clear. A perfect day. Catalina traffic, Skyhawk 80991, final 22, full stop Catalina. I'm Josh, a pilot and flight instructor with a passion for the sky, sharing it with those around me and using it to see the world from a new perspective. Flying can seem super complex, but I've made it my mission to showcase safe practices while enjoying the beauty this world has to offer. Subscribe to climb into the cockpit on future adventures. This is Aviation 101. Addison Ground, clear to Hotel Yankee India Airport. Via on departure flight, runway heading six back, radar vector, show four of nine. In the previous episode, Chelsea and I departed Santa Maria at dawn, bound for Catalina Island. We covered details about flying through the LA Special Flight Rules area without having to bug air traffic control, and we ended up completing the procedure now on the south side of the SoCal Bravo, perfectly poised to fly to the airport in the sky. These YouTube videos are covering the short technical snippets of our entire day trip to Avalon and back. I've edited a feature-length epic covering the entire day in all of its cinematic beauty. Within that hour-long video, we cover the camera equipment we're using, how it's rigged, survival equipment, and considerations, and we vlog our way through our day on the island together. And into the night, we run into some issues that cause us to divert, and I almost bust airspace right after that. It has a runtime of 54 minutes, and it's available now on Cockpit Club as the longest cinematic edit I've ever done. If you want to check it out, you can make an account at aviation101.com to get access to the basic feed on Cockpit Club, and you can upgrade to premium at any time when you're ready to subscribe to the exclusive content, like those cinematic edits, 360 flights, and more stuff coming soon like equipment I use to film, software, insights to filming your flights, etc. Whether you're watching the content on Cockpit Club or watching the technical videos here on YouTube, I greatly appreciate your support. In this episode, we're approaching the airport in the sky, Catalina Island. And while on the sectional chart it looks like any other airport, there are a few things you should know before you go. Always do your homework on the places you're flying to. Not only is it required by the FAA and 91103, each PIC shall, before beginning a flight, become familiar with all available information concerning that flight. Now doing that not only keeps you and everyone else around you safe, it also prevents you from bruising your ego and looking like an idiot because you didn't know something that was available information. Now I felt prepared for this flight, especially since I had been to Catalina before in 2020, but there's one bit of homework I'm going to find out I didn't do shortly after we land. LA Special Flight Rules, traffic Skyhawk 80991-3500 over Imperial Highway, southbound, exiting the area. LA Special Flight Rules. All right, Zamperini Field, which is Torrance, goes up to and including 2,400 feet. All right, we're above Torrance's Delta. We don't need to talk to them. Normally, I would monitor a frequency like that, but we are approaching our destination, so we're going to go ahead and start monitoring Catalina and get the weather. Catalina Airport, Avalon, California. Automated weather observation, 1536 Zulu. Wind one two zero at zero three. Visibility one zero. All right, we have our life jackets on. All right, we are out 21. from under shelf the Bravo. You can set it for um, higher altitude now if you want. What's field elevation? Field elevation is sixteen oh two, so twenty six hundred feet is pattern. 2-2 I think is what we should land. It's a little bit sloped uphill, so it'll help us slow down. I think we should come in and turn, enter the 45 right downwind. So I think I see it, right? Yeah, the airport is kind of this flat spot on the top of that plateau. Okay. Runway is 0422, 3,000 foot by 75, paved. Look at this altitude. It would let us get almost all the way back to shore. And by the time we get there, we're going to be almost gliding distance to Catalina. We're 10 miles out. So that little 
bottleneck of the island is called Two Harbors, because it's two harbors on both sides of the island. That's, that's basically the other town that's on the island. The big town is Avalon, it's over there, and then that's Two Harbors. And all the famous pictures of Catalina are taken from that tip of the island. And we'll see that on our way out. Catalina traffic, Skyhawk 809991, Cessna 172, 1010 miles to the north of the field. We're going to enter right traffic, runway 22, full stop, Catalina. First, let's cover some things you should prepare yourself with for the flight over. Number one, in a single engine airplane, all occupants should be wearing manually inflatable life vests. When I say manual, I don't mean you have to blow in them, although that's a backup option on most of them. I mean you have to pull a rip cord, which punctures a CO2 cartridge and inflates the vest. You don't want automatically inflatable vests as they'll inflate when they contact water. And once you first get wet, you may not be out of the airplane quite yet. So manually inflatable vests are what you want. A link to the vests that I use are down in the description. Number two, carry plenty of fuel. I feel like this doesn't need to be said, but I've run into plenty of pilots who don't pay attention to this. Catalina doesn't have fuel at the airport, and that's apparent by looking at the sectional, and on all the EFBs you'll see that it says no fuel data when you try to look up fuel. And three, for crossing water, albeit short, especially in a single engine, carry as much altitude as you can and have some signal methods ready in case your engine has an issue and you have to go down in the water. For us, we have a 406 MHz ELT installed in the airplane that we can trigger from a switch built into the panel. Additionally, we have a Garmin inReach. We also have the radio that we could quickly switch to SoCal Approach or Guard and announce our emergency if we need to make a forced landing. It's not likely, but it's not impossible, so be ready for anything. Alright, pre-landing. Seatbelt, shoulder harness is fastened. Good. Brakes pedal test. Good. Landing light, taxi light on, barrel minimums, we don't need them. Autopilot off. Uh, mixture set best power. Fuel selector on both. Confirmed. Flaps as required. We'll wait for the wide arc when we're being the numbers on that, and V-Ref is going to be 60 knots over the threshold. Got some cold water below us. Let's see, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sailboats in the harbor down there. Catalina traffic, Skyhawk 809991 is four miles to the north of the field. We're setting up for a 45 entry to the right downwind, runway 22, full stop, Catalina. Wow, that's so pretty. Yeah, it is. Catalina traffic, Skyhawk 809991 is on the 45 degree entry to the right downwind, 22, full stop, Catalina. I'm going to set 2600 for your altitude. Catalina traffic, Skyhawk 809991 on the right downwind, 22, full stop, Catalina. Wow, we entered at the perfect altitude. There you go. Catalina traffic, Skyhawk 809991, turning right base, 22, full stop, Catalina. Catalina traffic, Skyhawk 809991, final 22, full stop Catalina. Yeah, we're looking nice here. There you go. All right. Welcome to Catalina. Catalina traffic, Skyhawk 809991 is clear of the runway, Catalina. Welcome to Catalina Island, also known as the airport in the sky. We paid our landing fee and we were just in time to board our scheduled shuttle down to Avalon. Our awesome day in that picturesque town is covered in that feature length edit on Cockpit Club. But here, I want to talk about some things that you should know about Catalina before you fly here including the rule I broke and had to call myself out on. Number one, keep an eye on the weather. 
Luckily, the airport does broadcast a METAR so you can watch the weather on your phone or iPad ahead of time, but it is high terrain surrounded by water, so the cloud cover can change pretty quickly. If it's clear skies in Los Angeles, for example, that absolutely does not mean that it's clear on Catalina Island. Be prepared to scrub your landing plans and turn around if the airport becomes socked in by low clouds. Messing with that kind of weather around rapidly rising terrain is a fatal sea fit accident waiting to happen. 2-2 I think is what we should land. It's a little bit sloped uphill so it'll help us slow down. I think we should come in and turn, enter the 45 right downwind. Catalina traffic, Skyhawk 80991 on the right downwind, 2-2, full stop, Catalina. Number two, when you're approaching the airport, know your traffic pattern etiquette. Catalina is right traffic for 22 and left traffic for runway four. It's labeled all over the place, including right on the data block on the sectional like every other airport. The Conservancy mentioned to me that they see pilots doing straight in approaches all the time, and they strongly advise against it because of how busy this airport can get throughout the day. It's best to enter on the downwind by either crossing midfield or swinging out for a 45 degree entry like we did. And besides, entering on the downwind gives you a few minutes to look down at the runway out the window and familiarize yourself with the airport environment. And that's helpful even if you've been to this airport a hundred times. Check out chapter eight of the Airplane Flying Handbook for the FAA's recommendation for entering the traffic pattern at non-towered fields. Number three, the runway. It has a few challenges to it. First of all, you have steep slopes off both ends of the runway, and if it's a windy day, that can throw some startling turbulence at you right as you're approaching the numbers. If the wind is coming straight down the runway, you could expect some downdrafts off the end of the runway as the wind falls with the terrain, kind of like water flowing over rocks in a river. The runway is also sloped with a crown or a high spot in the middle. The chart supplement says the runway slopes up toward the southwest with a 1.8% grade. A 1.8% grade is about 1 degree, or a rise of 1 foot every 56 feet of length. So for a 3,000 foot runway, that means the southwest end of the runway is about 54 feet higher than the northeast end of the runway. Now generally speaking, if you do have to deal with a runway with a slope, you want to land uphill to help slow you down and you want to take off downhill to help you speed up on the takeoff roll. But you must consider the wind too. There may be a strong enough wind one way or another that still makes it worth it to take off uphill or land downhill. That just boils down to assessing the wind and the traffic flows in the moment and making an educated decision for yourself. The high spot in the middle of the runway creates this illusion when you're in the flare or on the takeoff roll that you're about to run off the end of the runway. This freaked me out the first time I landed here in 2020. When you're in the traffic pattern, familiarize yourself with the markings and the taxiways down on the runway so you're not tricked into thinking you're about to run out of room. Of course, if you ever feel unstable or uneasy about how much runway is left, don't ever force the airplane onto the ground. You can always apply power, go around, and try again. Number four, there is a landing fee at this airport. And I think that catches a lot of first time guests by surprise. After you land, you have to go up to the second floor of the tower and pay there. When we were there, it was $38. But this entire island, including the airport, is maintained by the Catalina Island Conservancy. The landing fees go right back to keeping this place natural, beautiful, and maintained so we can fly in and enjoy it. Before we left for the day, we grabbed a buffalo burger at the airport in the Sky restaurant, which was delicious, and we prepared to take off and circle the island at golden hour before flying back to the mainland. And this is when I realized my mistake from earlier in the day. Number five, read the entirety of the chart supplement for Catalina before you fly here. The part I missed was down in the remarks. The airport is attended, meaning somebody is monitoring operations from 1600 to 0100 Zulu. Operations are prohibited at night or when the airport is unattended. So, technically, operations at the airport today are not authorized before 8 a.m. local time. 
but we rolled into the ramp at about 7.50. Now Carl here at the airport didn't say anything about it because he was already in the tower at that point, but I still told him later in the day that I realized my mistake after seeing it in the chart supplement. Humility is a virtue, and I've made it a habit in life to call out my mistakes whenever I see them. He of course said no sweat because it was only by a few minutes, and we came right up to the counter when we arrived. The airport just doesn't sell fuel or anything like that, so the real revenue to keep the airport going comes from the transient landing fees. And every now and then a pilot will squeak in an hour early and try to sneak out in the afternoon rush without paying. Rest assured, the airport takes note of your tail number if you do that. Be an adult, pay your way, and respect the rules of the places you visit. I could go on for an hour about flying into this amazing place, but these are the main points I noted after reflecting on this flight into such a beautiful airport. And I hope this video will help you in some way with planning your own Catalina adventure. A little encouragement, and we're off. Golly, look at that drop off. Right over the hiking trail. Wow. I would love to come hike this. Catalina, traffic Skyhawk 80901, right downwind runway 22, Catalina. Catalina traffic, Cessna 5184 Juliet on the right downwind departing. Catalina traffic. We climbed to about 2,500 feet and circled the island as the sun descended into golden hour. In the next episode, we'll cross LAX going the other direction and be faced with a decision between inevitable risks as the sun disappears behind the mountains that we must cross to get home. On this channel, my mission is to showcase these beautiful places we use general aviation to travel to, while also shedding light on my inner pilot thoughts and considerations along the way. I want to make safety and humility a habit in general aviation, not just a talking point at safety seminars. And I think in that is the key to bringing down the fatal accident rate in general aviation and safely getting us all home to our families at the end of each trip. We'll talk more about that in the next video where we'll be faced with a puzzle of risks to solve mid-flight. If you're on Cockpit Club and watched the feature length movie of this trip, you already know what I'm referring to. If you'd like to support the channel, you can sign up for Cockpit Club at aviation101.com to get access to that exclusive content. Be sure to give this video a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. And until next time, everyone, you know the drill. I want you to stay happy, stay healthy, stay current, and you're flying, and most importantly, stay proficient. Sharpen your skills, do your homework, and be the type of aviator you yourself would look up to. We'll see you in the next video right here on Aviation 101. Fly safe.